you guys here for reading as well? Yes. yes. Um, I'm definitely not an expert in this. I just wanted to kind of start the discussion. Um, I've been posting, I've been trying to, I've used, I've used Goodreads for years and I really like it. I'm keeping track of far too many books that I'll never read. Um, and recently I started basically, instead of posting on Goodreads first, I just posted on my site, you know, want to read. And then I put the title, and usually I'll link to a local link on my site that redirects to Amazon, so I can always redirect it somewhere else. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, that, that's my interest. I mean, let's go around, I guess, and see what we're interested in doing. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, Brownie. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, okay, I'm interested in. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a Goodreads user, and I, I also love the interface. Um, and so I'm interested in all the functionality of Goodreads, including uh, um, just keeping track of my book collection. Um, so uh, and possibly even you know, sharing, uh, you know, keeping track of when I shared a book. Uh, uh, by the way, we, our etherpad is uh, etherpad.indweb.org slash reading. Um, you guys can just double check. I don't think I have their ones. I don't have Jack's for me. In my, I don't use a good reason or anything like that, but I'm trying to find a way to keep better track of the research I'm reading. And I would probably be I would, I would probably be doing uh, like adding synopses or uh, uh, notes so that I could refer to it later and try and hang together. Okay, um, and then potentially use that as a way to get hands on Okay. You said uh, publishing like citations too, like early. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I would probably want to do the metadata of. Uh, I started interested. I, I, I started being interested in, in reading this uh, one, one year ago, <coughs> and I used I, used, I started to use Goodreads, but Goodreads didn't satisfy my requirements. My requirements were beyond just uh, like reading time and review. I wanted to keep track of the uh, same as you. I want to keep track of the highlights, which you can if you read. Kindle, you can pull right now from Kindle yeah. good reads, but if you read offline, uh, there's no, no place to, to, to store them. So highlights and my, my personal notes, maybe like notes per chapter, so like more uh, elaborated notes, like summary notes. Uh, there were no way to do that. And, uh, so I, I moved off uh, good reads just to store all the data in, uh, in markdown files. And then that site generator, but it also didn't satisfy my needs because uh, now I, I wanted to to do like search across all quotes by by, te by text. If I want to find like, quotes and notes on some particular topic, you can't really do that with text files uh, because there is no it's not a semantic search. So I, I I start to use some like small CMS for my personal use to solve my personal. Um, Still, 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 still is early. Uh, yes, my interest is I spent three years obsessively recording uh, yeah, how many yeah, pages yeah. per day I read and have this multi page yeah. spreadsheet that shows pages per day and all kinds of like Excel generated graphs um, and recording like how often I read certain books. It's kind of a little obsessive. Um, so, uh, I mean, having a spreadsheet on my computer doesn't do much. So, kind of a way to share it. I read too much. I only read only two of my books a week. So, just kind of a more interesting way to track it, I guess. catch what the oh, meeting this. idea was. It just sounded like maybe it was interesting. So. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Anything that you're interested in with regards to tracking reading. So um, we're basically spinning around right now saying what our interest is. 
mine is like sharing books, like keeping track of books I want to read, and eventually like keeping track of progress. Um, we've got some examples of wanting to track like uh, research um, and add citations or even personal notes. So, um, yeah. if you have any interest that you want to add okay. in that yeah. area. I guess there's there's two things that come to mind. Uh, one is uh, Lord Cunningham just suggested to me something that he's been doing with his federated wiki that he's he's found it to be a really good tool for what he calls a, a reading journal. So I just started one. I haven't really populated it much yet, but um, but yeah, you know, the idea is basically it's it's sort of a, a wiki site that is um, acceptable with the federated wiki. The whole concept is kind of turned on. Ten, and you have like one wiki per person, and you can share easily between them. Right? So um, uh, it's you know it's easy to just drag in like a paragraph from a news article that you read, and then make a comment on it. Um, so I'm I'm planning to start that. And he was really talking about the utility of like now that he's been doing it for a couple of years, uh, that when he wants to go back, he's like, well, I read this thing. I think it was the Atlantic, and it was about this. You know, that it's easy that he can do a search. Find what he had, update his notes and stuff like that. So it's up to And then another, because I'm related, uh, well, related to this, but I'm related to the first thing I said, um, is within Wikipedia, there's, there's long been, um, there's been sort of an ongoing discussion about what's the best way to, is there a way to have sort of a database of citations for articles? So if there's like, if there's a, you know, if there's an article in The Economist that is really useful for a certain concept and it's cited in five or ten different Wikipedia articles, well, shouldn't that just be one thing that they all point to, or that they're all popular, you know, so you don't have to, like, duplicate the effort and worry about formatting differences and stuff like that. So I, I'm, it's not something I've really tracked closely, but it's uh, definitely something I'm interested in. I wonder if now that Wikipedia is becoming sort of more of a force in the Wikimedia world, whether that will... Or, you know whether someone will really come up with a good way to do that. Uh, but I do not have a. For me, Patel, um, I thought this might be interesting. I don't have a strong need or you know, something to do with this. Just right. Well, and I and I mean, I hear what you guys are talking about. I like theoritically, that's good, but that's interesting. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. Ben, what's all um, My interest is mostly discovering what other people are doing and learning about new stuff that wasn't on my agenda. Yeah. 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 I just go. As outdoors don't satisfy that. Not really. Um, like Goodreads to an extent, but Goodreads is messy and limited um, in terms of format and so on. Uh, I want people to share what they find interesting uh, on their own terms. Uh, and that could be cross platform, it could be cross format, it could be not just one book, but like a, uh, a genre even. Um, right, right. So that's. So that's I mean, yeah, a sort of technology, tech agnostic, we think of book as being one technology for con conveying ideas, like, I don't, like, it's much more about, like, what are, what are the interesting ideas that are being conveyed, uh, what are other people Thinking about this too. Yeah, discovery is an interesting. Especially in an indie web thing on our website. Bear with me, this is my first time leading a session, so I'm not entirely sure where to go. I guess we want to, like, Kind of extract some of the key elements we suggested. You know, like people have talked about highlights and notes, sharing what you're reading or what you're interested in, and can I can I add one? Yeah, just a general concept that I think is an important one that relates to all of these is that is is evaluating the quality of what you're reading, especially when it comes to news or actual or like academic information. See someone post an article like speculating that a presidential campaign has, you know, 
candidate has mob ties or something like that, and like you know, I think it's increasingly important to like be able to do one's own assessment of like is this fake news? Is this from a credible source? Is it well researched? So sort of like a uh, like a review system or vetting. You mean like well, I think that's others? I think that's one way to approach that. But, but I think I think just sort of I'm just trying to get get the question more broadly in there. Sure. You know, if you're trying to like like Ben was talking about discovery, well, along with discovery, like maybe if it's if it's just for fiction, maybe that's that doesn't matter. But but still, you might want sort of a quality filter, right? Maybe you're really into uh, you know 17th century historical fi fiction, but that doesn't mean you want to read everything from that. You want to read the good stuff. You want to read the stuff that's well written. You know? Like assessing quality could come from, like if you know the person whose recommendations you want, that's one way to get at it, or a rating system might be another way to get at it. Just like score probably, right? It's not coming in reference, it, it has to... That's one thing I like about Goodreads, is that it shows you like your friend's reviews, you know? So you can see the overall, like over everyone, this book is rated, where however many stars, but you can see your friends, what they actually rated it. Friends that I don't have a lot of shared um, interests, uh, evaluations of these oh, things. Okay. Like we like different TV shows, different kinds of music, and so on. So I have some friends, strangers. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> New books that people aren't recommending, so that you can become the recommender. Of books uh, that have Show me books in this genre that the no, none of my friends have read. <laughs> Some shared quote somewhere. But then, like, uh, so a couple of days ago, I, I opened a book. So I, I tried to find quotes and like publish them on my site. But then I opened like a book that says like corporate, you can't publish any part of this book except in the context where, for example, like you have an, you have like a blog post on that topic, and then you can republish one quote. Yeah. But you can't publish quotes as an attempt. Or you can't have published basically. Do you know like how to build it? Fair use law. Yeah. Well, fair use is, as far as I know, is unique to American law, uh, and it's, it's 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 basically like if you're if you're providing critical commentary or satire or something like that, it's fine. Like if you you, know, you can pull a paragraph from a book in, if your purpose is to to comment to add something new to that. Uh, but I don't think fair use exists in. Other countries' legal systems. I don't really understand how it works. It does. It does exist in the UK. Um, it does? Yes. I think, I think it was actually UK. Like UK books yeah. that I saw this particular phrase. I was uh -huh. so surprised that I can't. It's called fair dealing. Fair dealing. Yeah. But but uh, but I think it's. I've heard of fair dealing. I think there's some important distinction between the two. But I definitely agree with But I, I wonder how. So there's like big big quotes. I think. And they, they publish quotes that you have, like, whatever, like, some author, and you have a bunch of quotes from them. So how do they deal with this requirement? I, I wish I, I wish I had a good answer. I, it's Wiki, Wikiquote is one of the Wikimedia wikis I, I know the least, and I have the same question. I've never really gotten to. I know a lot of it is is, is public domain. It's like you know, dead for a hundred years. So, uh, but but certainly, like, there, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a. That is in copyright. Could just be that nobody's challenged. I kind of doubt it, though, because the Wikimedia community tends to be very 
best. They probably do have some you know, limit of like it has to be with like under a certain number of words or you know so, something that, that kind of keeps it within a certain theory of what makes it compatible with your so there's a problem with because because this lower court is everyone to keep their database privacy yeah. of quotes and that's opposite from what you wanted you you wanted to open database of quotes right. everyone goes to this entity right. Maybe actually I, I'm not sure it may not be illegal yeah, yeah. Because the because as a database, it's, it's like the whole point of it is that it's not commentary. Yeah. It's just giving you the yeah, raw. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like raw raw data, and you can't publish it. But why databases are bad? Yes. Maybe Google's book scan is being also used. They can display snippets of web pages or books. Right. But they're not. But they don't make the entire database available in multiple ways, right? You can get like you can get certain stuff pulled up as a, as a result of certain kinds of searches, but it's not like whole databases out there. Right. Wikipedia has uh, a pretty ex explicit uh, English Wikipedia is unusual in that it allows fair use photographs. Um, so for like album covers, is one like there are certain very specific uh, places where it's sort of agreed, and it's and it has to be fairly low resolution. Uh, it has to be, uh, you know, you have to explicitly say why you're using it. If it's like a photo of a person, it has to be someone who's dead because if it's if they're alive, then theoretically you could get a freely licensed one just by going and taking a picture of them. So there's like this these very and you have to kind of write it up according to a very specific format. To So yeah, based on that discussion so far, this stuff, let me know if I've missed anything, but I summarize it as some of the key desires or wants is keeping track of the books to read, discovering new books to read, uh, keeping track of research that you've read and also citations, um, keeping track of highlights and personal notes of what you've read, and then keeping track of reading progress. Um, anything else? How about, how, about, how about commentary? How about like uh, like if there's a if there's a passage in a book or a news article or something you know something like uh, you know the site Genius or hypothesis? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, annotation layers. Genius was controversial. I actually block it on my site. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I doubt anybody has ever had any reason to even annotate it. But there was a thing last year where. Uh, some people on the platform were harassing yeah. this journalist. I think it was a journalist, yeah, on her personal site. And they responded very badly to it, I thought. They were just kind of like, the web, and it's our product, we can do it. So I was like, all right, I'm blocking genius. Did anybody call me? This is a principal thing. Did anybody look at uh, there's like a JavaScript, basically, if it, it detects it. Uh, like this <laughs> URL starts with, because it's like genius.it, I think, slash whatever. It doesn't really stop. You, there's still other clients you can use. I think comment there, but it just makes it like, difficult. What if you said That's kind of a rabbit trail. So yeah, I guess like commentary and reviews, probably. Okay. So my, I'm pretty sure if I have my project tomorrow, I'm interested in actually making a very minimalistic micropub client to post books to my site. I think anything that has promoting. Yeah. It'd basically be like title and probably an ISBN number, and um, and then the fallback would be it would just post the text of the book, you know, like once you read the title of the book. And if your site supports doing more with that ISBN, you, know, you can put in a link to Amazon or whatever you want to do. And then that could be a foundation for adding commentary, adding a review, or adding a reading progress. I don't know if it's helpful to you. There are a couple of things in Wikipedia that 
that do what you're talking about. It'll allow you to put in the ISBN number and it'll auto populate the citation oh, with, with both, you know, the publisher, the author, and the year. So maybe, does it use like Amazon some, or something? Or? Uh, I would imagine it uses an open database. Or something, oh, yeah. But I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure. It probably uses like that. Oh, it, it, you know what I think it uses is OLCC. The OLCC. It's the it's the so I it's the organization that maintains WorldCat, which is okay. a like interlibrary loan system. Uh, so they're, they're basically a nonprofit that serves libraries, <laughs> like you know, proper sort of database. OCLC. OCLC. So I'm running a huge event that I had last at one day for, and that's because it has way more FAQs than I can fit in in Facebook. Right? Do you have any interest in that? Do you have any particular interest in reading this? Sure. Um, because I'm doing, working for the podcast startup and we're transcribing. It's almost the same issue. Like, you know, you read your book from beginning to end. You listen to a podcast from beginning to end. Showing you the URL that you can look graph. You might want to bookmark that. Uh, I need to be able to send email and have a link for everybody to be more sort of helpful. And the webinar happens here. I'd say 90% of the time. Also, how do you envision this class? It's an independent class, right? So you, you read the book offline or on Kindle, and then you go to, to the um, client and you might know it's a presentation. Right. Yeah, yeah probably. Like inside in with your website, yeah. using India, uh, because that way I don't have to deal with any with authentication. So you can just sign in with your name. Um, taking down the line, and it's really kind of depends on who starts using this and how they use it. But in theory, Micropub lets you send a request, like give me configuration information. So like configuration could request, you know, what are the books that you're currently reading. So if you wanted to go back to post a status update, you don't have to type in the book name again. You can just select it from the list. Um, conceptualizing how, like the micropub endpoint for this where would that necessarily be on your website or would it be on a separate site yeah it, it's a yeah micropub endpoints on your site um, basically it's a standardized way of sending a post request and it's, it's based heavily on micro formats so you, you get a post request that has like h equals entry and then other properties and and then it also has like a fallback property, which is usually just summary and it's plain text. You know, so in this case, it would be like summary equals want to read title of book. So if your micropub endpoint doesn't do anything custom, it would just post that as like a note on your site. And then the micropub endpoint, uh, uh, how how would it, how would it like uh, uh, work with the, the UI of your website? Wouldn't there be uh, would it be that everybody's Microsoft endpoint for this might display the information differently on the website, or does it just show up in a chronological stream? Of posts? Yeah, that, that's entirely up to the website. Okay. Um, so, like the endpoint itself is really just like it's just for receiving post requests uh, and storing it, and then usually and it's supposed to return like a URL. So basically, saying like, okay, I created a post, here it is, and then usually the Microsoft client watch it take directly to it, or it might show a link. So that could show, for me, um, I've just started using it more for photos. It just goes into like my note stream with the current timestamp. Okay, and then your, your website somehow has to have a policy of how it displays that, uh, all that data. Right, okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could get more advanced. Like you, your site could take that ISBN number and uh, you know, create a custom link or pull in additional information like author. You, know, you could just, uh, I guess in theory you could, you'd, you could just do an ISBN number, you know, not even type in the book name. Yeah. Or, or this came up a little bit in the last session, the, the microphone session. Um, Marty suggested it'd be really nice to just like get a barcode. Um, 
the ideal, probably if you're just holding the book, there, and then let's say you're on your um, phone. And and I have noticed that like, more the ideal would be so you start to type the, the book name, and then it's able to find the items, by able to find the cover, or the uh, volume, and Because it's sort of over us to scan, it's sort of over us to plug in. I suspect some of those cloud uh, 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 image recognition libraries will actually pull up the whole place at the end. Yeah, I mentioned like the previous session, the problem is, for example, yes, yeah, so you can use like Woodroots API to, to get all this data. Yeah. But the problem is that they have like this terms of service and they say you can't save data that you, like first of all, you need to put batch inside the two, and that's not video, that's fine, it's fair. And secondly, you actually can't store data on your service more than 24 hours. I mean, which is, which is, which is in that is an issue. Yeah, yeah that's specifically for uh, good, good risk. Uh, might, might be like better. Yeah. Just few open open yeah. libraries, but they also quality libraries. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, <coughs> I mean, that points to a need in a wider need in general for more open databases, right? And for like like a, a way to get around that potentially is to collaboratively build a database. So as everybody scans their books and plugs in their ISBNs. So on, it actually pings to some central database and, and inherently collaborates with something like that. I mean, there, there are a couple of projects, like there is library of Congress, they uh, open source everything, there is uh, open library from archive.org. They got kind of like all like, separated, not, not every entity is there, so that means there's, there's another database, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah. Collaborator. Yeah. So oh, I want Sorry, which which service was it you were saying had the, the restrictions? On I would like to be able to oh, okay. This that last time I checked a couple of months ago. And that's like for any data, or I think so. I mean, like especially like uh, stuff if you want to find book metadata. I mean, that's common. I think most of us in the web are actually breaking up into services. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's true, especially with stuff like reply context on tweets. Yep. You know, like I'm I'm copying tweets. Yeah, absolutely. I'm linking yeah. back, but yeah. No, yeah, like linking back is fine, but. Um, okay. Yeah, twenty four. You you may store information obtained from Woodrow's API for up to twenty four hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's in the terms of service. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of wondering, like at what point does it become retaining a cop, retaining their data and copying? You know, like, I mean, yeah, you know, ISBN in the title is the main stuff I want to do. You definitely can overcome that. You just make a call to them every twenty four hours and uh, update, but it's still still bad that they put even try to put that stuff into. Uh, but you, yeah, you can like cleanse data, you can like get some good proprietary data, but they didn't source the data themselves, they got it from somewhere else basically. No, no, they actually got it from users, users not sure what's from users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what's happened, you, you, you create a new book, okay. and then they don't allow anyone else to, 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 to use it. But like you could, you had a bot that like, just Amazon, like, the same yeah. music created, but maybe the information is different, I don't know. Well, I know, I know Amazon. I don't know. I don't amp the. Try that sense again. I know Goodreads is Amazon now, yeah, yeah. but I know like the Amazon API before. At least this was five years ago. I had a thing on my site. And Zanga had this too. You know, like you can make a post like I'm currently listening to, and you just type it in and auto fills it, and, and it was a link to Amazon with a Zanga referral code, so they can make money. You know, so I know the API allows stuff like that, but it doesn't. Like for example, the cover images have to be. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think we're going to stick with really basic information. Like, I'm not going to pull in cover photos or anything like that right now. Does the, uh, the watch plugin for known, does it also hotlink? It doesn't. So you actually have to upload the image itself. Oh. And I think John has built a Plex plugin that will do that automatically, but it's. Um, it's 
yeah, you, it forces the user to break the break the rules rather than. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Okay. So the question is going to be your yeah, I'm not going to be tied. Okay. Very remote. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And they worry about like two times. The hardest part is really what you need to do. I was before the project discovery, right? So we can conduct a discovery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, can you explain like more like what what you're looking for in discover and like how how do you think it works? I want to like my knowledge, like I have things that are on my on my radar, so it of books, um, so all that sort of stuff, and that's great. I want, I explicitly want to break out of my own little bubble. So I want like a feed. I want a feed in general. I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. I want a feed in this case of here are the things that people are finding interesting. Here are the books that stimulated them. Here are like, and maybe it's not one book. Maybe it's like a great example would be. Like, here are my favorite science fiction books of all time, right? And there's maybe 10 of them, but they come as a bundle. Uh, and, it's, and it's like, well, okay, you know, this is, you know, uh, this is something I've drawn, and maybe I've read seven, but I've read three. Or, um, or they've got a link on them, you know, as well, saying, well, I, read, I just read this book, but it was actually, like, recommended to me by Greg, and then, you know, and I can follow that, and I can go back to that and so on. Like a network of, a network of recommendations, kind of a, it's a, sorry. People like curating things. Some people like curating things. They'll, they'll, make, they'll yeah. make lists of things, but you know, they only want to do it if they know people are actually following their recommendations, because otherwise it's a waste of effort. Yeah. yeah, there are some people who'll just do it for themselves, I think, but I think most people is true. Yeah. Yeah, basically, you want to see, like, curate a list of, like, favorite books from some person. Yeah, among other things. Like, also, also, one book, you know, like, if someone goes, listen, I just read this book, it's life-changing, you know, it's about, you know, it'll change the way you think about trout fishing in New York. Right, which is not a topic I'm interested in at all. But like, if it was a topic I was interested in, right, and I'd be like, yeah, okay, great, and then I'd, I'll go and find my work. Personal recommendations are more important than So I want to see. Sorry, say that again. Personal recommendations are more important to me uh, in terms of how I choose the media that I consume than emails. People I trust. How it's also, if you know there's a group of people who yeah. are, have read a certain set of books and you haven't read those books, you know, if you read, read those books, you can have a conversation. Also, that, right. And it's like, and I know that I like these people and I want to sort of talk about these ideas with them. So, and, and that could be like informal, it could again be like fiction or something like that, or it could be very formal. Hey, to get started with the indie web, you know, yeah. you need to be thinking about this book, this book, this book, and this book, and that will really help you, um, you know, get, get up to speed. You know, that that really is, you know. And so it sort of ties into education, leveling up, sort of. Uh, yeah. I have a And how, how, how does it work like, in terms of in, in the web? Like, is it like everyone publishes on their own size this list, or like just one book, and you go? Um, I, I, you know, like, how do you, it's cool, or like you follow, yeah, I, I, like, I mean, I would, I would imagine in the first instance it would be everyone publishes for their own site. Again, like, this is a bigger thing, I think there's, there's a space for, like, collaborative, like, hub feeds where lots of people, like, syndicate out to central places. Yeah. So it's like, I'm posting about the IndieWeb on my own site, I'm going to post it on my site, but then I'm also going to copy it to this sort of central spot so other people can discover that very topical, that, that, that on topic posting. Yeah, that might be certainly beyond like what you've probably yeah. done in for more of like the MegaPub client. But it, no, so yeah, that's that fine. It's definitely within the scope of the conversation. Like, though. Keep the database while people are submitting, and then maybe have, like you can opt whether you want, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever books you upload to go to that public feed, or and then it would link back to your. Yeah. Yeah.
there's some tangential discussion. Well, yeah, kind of tangential to that. There's been some discussion about Indie Web Podcast Club because a lot of us are listening to podcasts, yep. and um, it was actually Eli in our Indie Web chat who wrote a post about it, and it was basically just kind of like let's start sharing podcasts we're listening to, and then kind of share commentary on them. And I think Ben actually suggested something like, like yeah, it would be nice to have a central hub that yeah, you know. There's Write a post on your site, link to the article, maybe link to the episode, and then ping that hub. Sort of like we have, we have news.indieweb.org, which uh, if you guys aren't familiar, it's basically you can write anything on your own site or bookmark, you know, like here's a bit of news that's related to IndieWeb. So you can make a bookmark on your site and submit it, and it automatically gets added to news.indieweb.org. And that also goes out in our weekly newsletter. So people will write articles, you know, like this is a new thing I implemented on my site, and all I have to do is kind of ping. And when you say ping, is that some particular technology, or you go manual to this hub? And it's, it's it's web mention. So basically, you, uh, you you add it as a syndication target. You say like, here's my article, syndicated to uh, news on indieweb.org, and it has actually we have a couple different language pages on there too. So you can say like, this is on the English one or the German one, or there's a couple others. So yeah, something like that. It could be really easy. Like you you know you. You post it on your site, whether it's through Micropub or whatever, and then you say, I want, I want this also go to, I don't know, the IndieWeb Reading Recommendation Club or something. Or, or for example, like if you if you made a review on a book, and that hub already has a book, then you can see all reviews of the book. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why the members are going to that. What's that? The search engine spammers are going to that. Like post their Viagra site and then we still mention the web. But that's where Vouch comes in. And yeah, yeah Vouch is an anti spam for web yeah, mentioning, yeah. which surprisingly, surprisingly, like I don't, I don't think there's actually been any native web mention spam. Um, once it gets, hopefully, you know, we get into WordPress core, and then suddenly 25% of the web does web mention, then, yes. <laughs> then all bets are off. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. A discovery hub would be cool. I mean, that could even be part of the MicroPub client. You know, it could be like on the same site or something. Um, I don't know if I'm up to the immediate task of. Yeah. I mean, it's a big, doing that it's a big task. Like the, yeah. the first task is just yeah. building read posts in a comfortable way. But this all sort of comes out of blogging and about this syndication. Curation or syndication. Together myself, I want to share it with the world. And anybody can do anything with it. But I think it's actually more complicated than that. I don't know what else, but actually, not everybody can do everything with it. If I put this up here for you. Then you start getting into decentralized access permission. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other deal. Well, that's also, can anybody understand that? <laughs> like, I think people do a lot of this stuff by default when they use Facebook. And, I do trust Facebook more than the World Wide Web. For my data is on Facebook. If they abuse it, they will. They lose something. Yeah. My data is out in the world. Some spammer can lose it and they have no reputation. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, what are you interested in as far as tracking like, reading progress? So it would actually be so instead of just like instead of just saying I'm on page whatever today, you would want to say I read between this page. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. updating it daily. I would only have to put what page I got to. Okay. Yeah. 
Do you ever read like a couple of books at the same time? Oh right, yeah. And you do it man manually every day, every day for the last few years. Oh, so you're still doing the spreadsheet? Um, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> was it was way too tedious, or? No, it was the part where we were studying to become a developer and was unable to read as much as I wanted. <laughs> so I decided rather than track that, I was like, what can I just not track for so now I can pretend that I read. Like, yay, nay, or everything. Yay, nay. Tracking reading is just, I read a lot of of academic papers. Yeah. I don't read them very carefully. I'm skimming a lot of them. Like, okay, here's a PDF. I just looked through it for one minute. Uh, I don't spend the time, three minutes, to, to record my notes about it. Hmm. That was interesting. Move on. That was interesting. Whereas with a book, I, I have invested in that. Uh, uh, I'm on the same book for a while. Well, I'm switching from one paper to another paper to another paper. Papers are probably very useful in your notes because if I write a blog post later, I would like to be able to say the notes I gave. Starting to code, um, and like I have favorite blog articles on certain topics, so like a way to recommend. Xbox. These are the three best articles for it. I don't know that is too off topic because it's all versus books. I don't think so at all. No. Uh, I mean, yeah, like academic articles are usually URLs or PDFs. You know, it can be anything. I, I, yeah, I, just have to uh, I would, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it might be nice for for stuff like articles. Uh, I mean, if I read a paper and I read it for one minute and I skim it, then I don't necessarily care about recording it. But if I do read something in more depth, it's still less than the book. But it might. There's a lot of uh, software like Zotero that's quite good at extracting the metadata from the PDF. I wonder. I mean, yeah, but yeah. just put in the PDF or, like, URL and it will automatically build it in. Google Scholar and yeah. find the entire sheet of articles to save the time of entering it in. And also, yeah. um, keep it into the system so you have a way to manage them. Yeah. But then you will write the same thing um, if you're pulling the data and then you're going to get everything. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, with academic articles, there's not the URL is not being posted uh, right. on, the, on the, the official publisher site. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's great. Yeah. And also, yeah. each author has a chapter on their own site. That should yeah. go on. Yeah, that should go on your head. Which author might actually be different yeah. documents. Yeah, yeah, they're slightly different versions. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and yeah. so the ones on the publisher yeah. sites are almost always not public, right? So yeah. even if so that wouldn't be useful in this client. Um, is it illegal to, like, most of them have PDF, but is it illegal to publish that PDF? Let's say you, you, you have a page and you have a review on that paper. Is it illegal to include, to copy that PDF into your own site and include it to the PDF? I'm just saying. That, that's a good question. I almost almost it depends on the license. You, if you were to take a guess. So for academic articles, you're interested in tracking just that you skimmed it, or like how do you maybe some key ideas from it? Reviews and or some notes. It would be nice to see other people's reviews of them. Yeah. 
It'd be nice to be able to cross reference between them. Not, not necessarily like Article A cited Article B, but be able to say, oh, like I was reading this article and made me think of this other idea. Or co citations, and I'm reading this paper and this other paper, and then this paper citing these two, and it also citing these two, therefore maybe I want to read this one. Have you guys talked about that? Sorry, what's mind mapping software? <laughs> yeah. I tinkered with it a long time ago. Uh, it's always interesting is the UI never works. Yeah, so the, the, problem, <laughs> yeah. the problem with this is that I didn't know that that was actually at the top, so we can search for it. Something I also want to know is I want to be able to, how do I check? So how do I check the Um, what, there, there is, there's some, I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, um, yeah. like, what's the, uh, sort of a, like, traditional scoring mechanism for academic articles, like citations, how many citations does it have, and I know there have been some efforts to come up with a more sophisticated system for that. Uh, no, it, it does, it, it's Well, look, that's for scientists, like, there uh, are uh, no number or something, but, uh, but so yeah, I guess do we want to discuss any like I'm pretty sure I'm going to do the micro client tomorrow. Um, so I mean, if anyone's interested in collaborating on that, um, any other I guess like next action steps or something. So if I log into Telegraph right now, will it show me? I mean, from my part, uh, this made me think I might look into uh, no. so, what, what so the API is access you can get through like Google Scholar. So, like, so I just thought that's, one one but that's also that's a specialized one one address. Address. And, and I'm like, like how much more energy am I going to put into making Well, I'm definitely, I mean, I'm definitely interested in make, making it, you know, as broad as possible, you know, it doesn't have to be. I basically, that was my use case, and it was like the simplest thing I could think of, like a one-day project. Yeah, I mean that, that's the potential. Like I might mean, look into yeah. it more if there, okay. if there does seem to be a way to kind of hook into those things. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, Gregor Love. Pretty much everywhere. This might be maybe too far off the radar, but uh, what about like a book club or a virtual book club meeting? That sounds kind of like the the hub almost, like he's saying. Like I can definitely imagine, um, I don't know, maybe you can subscribe to certain people on that hub, you know, like say, I, these are the people that I'm like most interested in, like just show me these reviews, you know. Okay. Just show me Ben and Jim's. Things they posted there. A quick and dirty version of that could just be posted some Twitter with our hashtag. Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. What's that? Just a posted to Twitter. So you you write your you write your your red post hashtag it um, just to get Twitter to discover them that way. Which make you post? Yeah, I thought that was interesting this morning. Like with contact with his hundred days because he doesn't have tags. So, but he syndicates the Twitter. So he just you know, Twitter's just a hashtag. That was cool. I never thought of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of so social experiments. Yeah. Do you get pair? I think it'd be interesting to pair people that would, you know, interests that they would have in common, but yet still would bring different. I think it can be so yeah. 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 <laughs> match those people and yeah. match people. Probably. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you have it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably yeah. a little bit easier physical space than it is online. Yeah. Although maybe not, because I mean, online geography yeah. isn't an issue. Yeah. Some of you probably have more in common yeah. 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 Well, like, It'll be easier now that we have indie map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Otherwise, that person spreads until they end up the books. <laughs> <laughs>